Well, hey everybody, welcome back. We're over on the workbench today because I've got this Proto 2000 Jeep 9 uh, that has DCC, but it does not have sound, nor does it have a Keep Alive. So I think it's time for an upgrade. And I've got all my goodies out. I've got my fine tip on my soldering iron. Um, sponge is wet. Got all the soldering goodies out there. My Kapton tape, double-sided foam tape. We've got our 30 gauge wire. Yeah, our package O decoder wire. We've got our decoder. We're gonna put it, be putting a uh, 1533 from TCS into that Proto uh, Jeep 9. It's the same thing I did uh, in my last video. Um, it doesn't have a motherboard, it's all sort of enclosed. Uh, and I'll just hardwire that guy in because there's no, the harness doesn't fit. I've got my, I ordered whatever the minimum, I think it was like six of these things to get about an 80 cent discount on the sugar cubes and um, cab enclosures. So I've got, uh, got the speaker there. We've got our axle gears. I'll just replace all four. These come in packs of six. Um, so I still have two left from the last package. Um, so I'll use four of those. Um, let's see, got my LEDs, these little tiny surface mount ones. And they come with, these are warm white, and they come with these uh, resistors. And I talked about this uh, when I did that Southern Jeep 7 a while back. Um, but those resistors are rated for, I believe, a quarter watt. And I'm just going to go ahead and use 1000 ohm resistors rated for a half watt uh, on the lights just to avoid any potential problems. Um, so gearing up here, got all my all my my tools out, strippers and various forceps and stuff. And uh, let's get after it. Uh, the last one was an adventure that took weeks because I kept making mistakes and had to figure out how to work with the shell and the frame and how to fit everything. Well, now I know all that stuff, so I'm hoping to kind of just knock this one out here uh, here today. So let's, let's get into it. All right, well, we're in the shell and gosh, the gears are a mess. So I've been in here cleaning them up. Um, it didn't look like any of the axle gears were cracked. I know that's real common with these older protos, so I am just gonna replace them all anyway. And that's the part number. It's an Athern uh, part. They come six in a pack. Um, they look like that. So I'm gonna replace, those are the new ones. And those are the old ones over there. And you can see how much gunk I've already kind of cleaned out of the gears, just using some isopropyl alcohol. And uh, that's the old little DCC only, no sound, uh, NCE decoder that had been in there by the prior owner. And he did a pretty nice job with that install. So now I'm just sort of focused on <clears throat> getting these wheels, um, the, the axles replaced. I'll get some good fresh uh, grease down in there um, and put the lids back on here and flip this guy around and start on the electronics. Yeah, all right, got the new axles on and a little bit of LaBelle 106, little rice size green right there. And I'll put the uh, lids back on and uh, be done with uh, with the wheels and the gears. One other quick note, when you're putting wheels back together, the um, it's good to use a gauge. Just make sure the uh, the wheels are, are in gauge um, because that axle is a little bit get forgiving. You can uh, kind of have them, if you sh shove them all the way in real tight, you're actually a little, a little um, less than gauge. So you gotta kind of slam them together and then it's kind of hard to do, and then kind of gently work it out like a, you know, fractions of a millimeter uh, and then it will be engaged. So I do that on all four and then I put the, uh, the covers back on. Pardon my giant hand in the way there. Um, these things didn't want to stay put. So next I need to take the frame off and cut past the little holes on the top there, um, on both sides for the keep alive to fit down in there. This piece will fit there. I stuck the harness in there to make sure I had as much room as I thought and my hands kind of big and in the way, but let me take the keep alive out of the way, show you this real quick, sorry. So this can fit right there. And what I, what I noted on the last install is that the wires can pass 
in that little gap there. That actually works quite well. So um, that is that is the next step. So I'm going to take the frame off. It's pretty straightforward. Um, there's just a couple of screws here on the bottom uh, on the fuel underneath the fuel tank. If you take, there's a plastic cover sitting over there. Comes right off. And that gives you um, these two screws. There's also screws at the end um, by the couplers that I've already taken out. Um, so that is all there is to getting the frame off, which uh, the first time I did one of these, I thought that was a much bigger deal than it actually is. Well, unfortunately, to get the frame off, the uh, the, pre the previous owner had done a nice, nice job on his uh, decoder install. The only reason I'm changing it out is because I want to keep alive and I want sound. Um, so I had to, he had this nice little three-way uh, junction here I had to cut because it went over the top of the frame. But it is what it is. So the frame's off, that simple. And I'm going to take this notch out right here. And I'm just going to use a hacksaw. I'll, uh, I'll go outside. I'll do that. I'll, uh, I'll use some canned air and spray all the shavings uh, off of this real good before I bring it back. And also now that I'm in there, I can see that that little pickup right there needs cleaning as well. So, I mean, this unit could be, you know, 20, 25 years old. God knows how long it sat on somebody's shelf before I picked it up on eBay. So a little bit of maintenance as we go uh, while we're inside. Uh, won't hurt anybody. All right. So just like the GP7, there is cut one done. You can see the two little notches that came off the right side there but that wasn't enough i don't know what's different i'm using the same kit but the both the decoder and the keep alive seem thicker than before so i've marked a new line um there i'm showing the, the keep alive how thick that is so I, I made a new line another millimeter or two lower and um made that cut as well uh this time i got the dremel out with a cutting disc so that makes two cuts, and this adventure continues. I put everything back in. It's the locomotive on the left, and it is still not right. You can see it doesn't come down all the way with the decoder in there. So I got the cutting wheel out again and really dug into the back, and you can see the Keep Alive fitting nicely in there now. All right. Well, I've got the uh, track leads and motor leads soldered in as well as the Keep Alive and everything kind of stowed and tucked neatly. And <clears throat> the, the purple wire, wires are for the speaker. The yellow and white are for the rear and front light, uh, respectively, along with the blue common. And I don't know that I uh, am up for much more, so I'm gonna slip the shell on this guy, uh, and hopefully my measurements are correct. I took a, a bunch of tries milling that frame. Didn't leave a whole lot left <laughs> back here. Took a whole lot of it out. Um, so let's just uh, see if this fits and I might wrap it up here uh, for this week. And we are good. Uh, everything slid all the way down like it's supposed to. So that's the, the one that I had professionally done here, this uh, 1926, a year, a little over a year or two ago. And I've since been doing them myself. That's 1929, and now I'm sitting down just as low on the trucks as the pros. So uh, my milling job isn't as pretty as theirs, uh, not even close, but uh, you can't see that, so I don't care. <laughs> and the frame didn't fall apart. So I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I'm, uh, I'm running out of steam. I'll take on the uh, getting the speaker in there and the LEDs uh, here over the next couple of days and, uh, and show you guys that uh, once I have it done. So I'll... Uh, I'll stop here. I hope uh, everyone's well and safe. Thanks for watching, guys.